Hello and welcome to this beginner tutorial on creating grass using hair tool in Cinema 4D. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be creating a static grass and understanding the hair material. Then we're going to move on to this crazy donut which is driven by vibrato tag. Lastly, we're going to create this fluffy grass and achieve this kind of smooth, wavy effect. So here we are in Cinema 4D. And what we're seeing is that my character is standing in front of two landscapes and they're covered entirely in grass. Well, technically, this is a hair. First, what I want you to do is to go to your project settings by pressing Ctrl D and then just scroll down to your color management and switch it from basic to open color O. In case you have any materials in the scene, click Convert to OCIO. The render settings itself are pretty basic. The only thing is that I have zero buckets on denoising. Okay, let's disable the existing hair. In order to apply hair to your object, we just need to select the object first and then press Shift C and type Add Hair. And that's pretty much it. We can also see that it created its own hair material. In this case, we don't really need the hair guides to be populated everywhere on our landscape. So we're going to get rid of this one and also the material that it came with. I'm going to select the object, go to polygon mode and briefly select the polygons where I want my hair guides to be generated. After selecting polygons, press Shift C and add hair. Now we can see that our hair guides are exactly where we want them to be. Take a look at a few options here. Count stands for the count of the guides in our scene. In this case, these blue lines. And the length, it's going to control the length of the overall hair. And the root, which is set in this case on a polygon vertex, if you go to polygon view, you can see that hair is populated exactly on our vertices. In this case, I would recommend to change it to polygon area. And if it's not going to update instantly, you can always go to editing tag here and click reroute and then regrow. We're not going to dive deep into these settings. We're just going to move here into the hair tag. Here we see that the hair count by default is 50,000. This means that in our final render, we're going to see 50,000 hairs. I'm going to fire up my render view. So this is what it looks like by default. If you'll double click the hair material that came with our hair generator, we're going to see lots of options that we have here. Before we dive into those settings, I just want you to lean back and enjoy the show because we're going to go through some of the top settings of the hair material. So let's start with curl modifier, which is pretty cool, I would say. And you can set it to around like 50 or like minus 90 in this case, what I had and play with variations. Uh, you're going to get like totally different looks on each number. So make sure you play around those settings a lot because it's going to affect how your hair is going to look like in the end. I'm going to quickly enable the region rendering and move on to the wave one, which is also really easy to do. You just need to enable the wave. I have 30% wave variation of 60% and scale 10 to 90 on x and y axis. You can go 10 by 10 and variation to like 20. So you can go as crazy as you want with those settings. It's just important for us right now to understand what they're doing. So the next one would be freeze, which is turns out to be one of my favorite effects. So what it does is basically spreads out your hair. With only use of this modifier, you can achieve pretty beautiful effect. So twist one is a little tricky. As you can see here, I have a curl enabled because we can't really see what twist does in these particular settings. So that's why I enabled curl so I could curl the hair first and then add the twist modifier. And if we will change uh, the twist angle, I'm just going to update it instantly. Okay, let's talk about kink. Kink is pretty beautiful modifier. And as you can see, I have pretty simple settings, 50 to 50 on X and Y and 33% of variation with 33% of kink. Notice that I have thickness also turned on here. And let's talk about why. Let me toggle this off for a second. And as you can see, it looks pretty interesting to me, but those lines are like too thick and too even. For that, we can turn on the thickness and adjust the root and the tip of the hair. For example, we can go even crazier, like five to two, and we're gonna get like broccoli looking hair. 
So of course, this is too crazy in this case. So I'm going to go back to two and the one. Long story short, you can play around a lot to get what you're looking for. So let's move on to the clump. Basically, it just sorts, clumps the hair. And the best visual representation for this example would be a sphere with a hair on it and then our hair material. And I have here clump enabled and also some of those other modifiers. But let me turn all of them off. So this is what clump is doing here. Let me turn off the clump itself. This is what it looks like without any effects on. So yeah, make sure to play around those settings because they're gonna give you pretty ridiculous and different effects. Um, also, keep in mind that when you're working with clump or anything in that nature, try to also experiment in the range of like normality to not to crush your PC. Um, in this case, if I will set my segments here in my hair tab to 12, look what it looks like. It looks like it's a pretty interesting effect, but I mean, totally different, right? So make sure that you get your segments right. And those segments are totally different from the segments that we have in a guides tab. Um, by the way, all of these projects are available for free and you can get them from my Gumroad store. Make sure to check the description for that. And it's time to go back to our project to create our first ever hair material. That we're going to actually reuse it for this entire time throughout the project. So make sure you're paying attention. Since we already know some of those major options here, we can start designing our hair material. But for this, I'm going to enable region rendering and concentrate on this specific part of our composition. Let's start with thickness. Let's set root to 2 and the tip to 0.7. I'm also going to decrease the amount of the hair that we're seeing in the scene because they're too much for this small space. Maybe set this to 10,000. Yeah, that looks nice. And now let's go ahead and enable length, which is new modifier that we're going to learn. It controls the overall length. I know it might sound confusing because this over here also controls the length. And if we're going to adjust it, you can see that it's going to go small. So what's the difference? So this one cannot go any higher than 100%. Also, this one has no option for us to sort of automatically adjust the variation. We have to do manually to do that on our hair guides, but we're going to dive into that later. So for now, let's set our length 70% and we can go variations for like 70. Next, let's enable scale. This is also a funny option to get interesting look. And let's set scale to 60% and the variation to 50%. I'm just gonna turn on kink here and leave it the way it is. And then we can move on to the bend and we can set the bend amount to like 15% and 65% of variations. And we can decrease the amount to 90. Twist modifier. And we can set the twist to around 12. And let's increase the variations to 50. Also, we can turn on wave effect and we can pretty much leave it. As you can see, our grass is not really super smooth and they also look super a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and decrease maybe something like 7,000. Yeah, looks more acceptable. And I'm also going to increase the segments to around maybe 24. Now we can turn off the region rendering. Let's go to the color tab and leave this tab as it is because we're not going to touch it. Go to texture and go to gradient. Then we're going to click the gradient itself and you can set basically whatever color you want here. I'm just going to go ahead and pick some of my presets. So the type is responsible about how this gradient is going to be applied to your hair. I'm just going to go ahead and stay here with uh, cylindrical. It's more kind of even and also not even at the same time. Um, if you will take a look on this from the top view, you can see what the grass really looks like. To increase sort of the saturation of our color, we need to go to specular 
and decrease the amount of Thranx to 30%. By decreasing Thranx on a specular map, we just basically made our grass less reflective. He has more room to have its own diffusion. Using the same technique, now let's add the hair on the same object behind. Let's select the polygons, press Shift C and type add hair. Well, it's going to look exactly the same as this one previously. What we can do here, first let's decrease the amount of the hair to around 7000. Then we can increase this to 24 like we did for the other one. Now we can replace this hair material with the one that we have already created just by holding down Alt key and drag and drop on top of the other hair material. As you can see, we can see the land behind this and also we don't have enough hairs. Go ahead and increase that number to maybe 17. And now we can also disable our landscapes from rendering so we don't see them. And that's a wrap on today's tutorial. Don't forget that there is a second part too where we will dive into creating dynamic grass animations. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. You can also follow me on Instagram and become a Patreon for more advanced tutorials. Once again, thank you for watching, this is Sandro and I'll see you next time.